So far, we've talked about confidence intervals for means, where you're trying to estimate mu, the population mean, or the average value of something for some big population. And then we talked about confidence intervals for proportions, where you're trying to come up with an interval estimate for P, what proportion or what percentage of some population falls into some category. The last kind of confidence interval we're going to talk about is confidence intervals for variances or standard deviations, where you're trying to come up with an interval estimate for sigma, the population standard deviation, or for sigma squared, the variance. So the formulas look like this inside the box here on the screen. There are two formulas, one for variance and one for standard deviation. And the one on the bottom is for standard deviation, and it's used more often because it's more common to work with standard deviation than with variance. But they're almost the same formula, except that the one for standard deviation involves taking square roots. So if you started with the formula for the variance, and then you took the square root of the numbers that you got from that formula, you would get the confidence interval for the standard deviation. So when you use this formula, the top formula would tell you that the variance is between some number and some other number, and the bottom formula will tell you that the standard deviation is between some number and some other number. So in these formulas, the N stands for the sample size, how many individuals you have in your sample, same as it always has. The S stands for the sample standard deviation, and that is going to get squared as part of the formula. And then the thing that's new that I have to really explain is the parts in the denominators. Those are chi-square sub right and chi-square sub left. So that symbol that looks like an X is actually the Greek letter chi, spelled C-H-I, but pronounced chi. And so chi-square is another distribution. We've used the standard normal distribution, which is the Z distribution. We've used T distributions. Now we're using a new distribution, the chi-square distribution. And so we're going to have to use a new table. So when you use this formula, the numbers that you plug in on the bottoms of those fractional expressions for chi-square right and chi-square left, you have to get those numbers from table G. So here's what table G looks like. It's on that same important formulas card that had table F and table E. So if you found table F from when we were doing section 7-2, just on the next page, you've got table G, which we're using now. Now notice down the left side of the table, it says degrees of freedom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So that works the same way as it did on table F. Degrees of freedom is your sample size minus one. So that's how you know which row of the table to look at. Then across the top of the table, you see a bunch of numbers, 0 0.995, 0 0.99, 0 0.975, and so on up to 0 0.005. So to know which column to look at, you're gonna be getting two different numbers off the table. One number to use for chi-square right, and another number to use for chi-square left. And all you really need to know is if you're doing a 90% confidence interval, you will be looking at the columns with 0.05 and 0.95 at the top. If you're doing a 95% confidence interval, you will be looking in the columns with 0.025 
and 0.975 at the top. And if you're doing a 99% confidence interval, you will be looking at the columns with 0 0.005 and 0 0.995 at the top. That's all you really need to know to use the table. But I've tried to explain a little more about what the relationship or the rule is here. Whatever your confidence level is, that represents like the area in the middle of the distribution, the middle 90% or the middle 95% or whatever. Alpha would represent the area outside that. So if you're doing 90%, alpha would be 10% or 0.10. But then half of that area is over on the right and half of it is over on the left. So the area over on the right is where you have alpha divided by two, and the area on the left is where you have one minus that. And I could try to explain it in even more detail, but you don't really need to know. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll find a good link that explains it, but all you need to know is whatever your confidence level is, that is what determines which two columns of table G you're going to be looking at. So, for example, if you are doing a 90% confidence interval and your sample size is 11, a sample size of 11 means your degrees of freedom is 10. For a 90% confidence interval, you're going to be looking at the columns for 0 0.05 and 0 0.95. So the column with 0 0.05 at the top and 10 degrees of freedom, you find the number 18.307. So that would be your chi-square right. And then when you look at the column with the 0.95 at the, at the top and go down to the row where degrees of freedom is 10, the number you find there is 3.940. So that's the number you would use for chi-square sub left. So now let's work through a whole example. Find the 90% confidence intervals for the variance and the standard deviation of the ages of seniors at Oak Park College if a sample of 24 students has a standard deviation of 2.3 years. Assume the variable is normally distributed. So we have a sample of 24 students. That means 24 is the sample size. It's n. That means degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 23. And that sample has a standard deviation of 2.3 years, so that is S. That's the number you'll be putting into the formula for S. So we're going to be using this formula. We'll be putting in 24 for N, which means N minus 1 is going to be 23. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the number 23 for N minus 1 times 2.3 squared divided by, oh, we have to look up the numbers to use for chi-square right and for chi-square left. So when we look those up, we're going to go to table G. If you never use table G, you've left out a, a key step. So make sure you, you, you have used table G to get your answer. Go to table G, and we'll look in the columns point, for point oh five and point nine five down to the row where degrees of freedom is 23. And the numbers we find are 35.172, so that'll be our chi-square right, and 13.091, so that will be our chi-square left. So when we put those into the formula, and by the way, those numbers do not get squared. Those are already the values for chi-square. So the chi-square, the square is part of the symbol. We are going to be squaring 
the numbers we have for s. So it's 23 times 2.3 squared over 35.172 on the low end of the interval. And that works out to be, well, let's put it into the calculator. 23 times 2.3 squared divided by 35.172 is 3.459 and so on. So it's about 3.459. And then on the upper end of the interval, we're doing 23 times 2.3 squared divided by 13.091. And that comes out as 9.294. So that right there is our confidence interval for the variance. Then if we take square roots of that those numbers, the square root of 3.459 is 1.859 something, so about 1.86. And the square root of 9.294 is 3.048 something, so about 3.05. So that would be the confidence interval for the standard deviation. So if I asked for the confidence interval for the standard deviation, that is what you would give me for the answer. Now, unfortunately, there is no built-in special graphing calculator function that will do confidence intervals for variance or standard deviation form for you. So unlike with the other confidence intervals we've been doing, you can't just go to a, a menu on your graphing calculator and put in the numbers and have it give you the answer, unless it has some function that I don't know about. But I've been doing this for a few years now, and I've never learned about a graphing calculator function that can do this for you. So you have to use the table and the formula.